we're going to be talking about how to speed up Hearts of Iron 4. It is the most common question. People ask it. I feel like now with five years of experience of Hearts of Iron 4, I can give a really good answer. How to speed up that game, okay? Some of them, you will not like the, the, the what I'm going to do. Some of them, you may love and adore me. And some of you may just say, well, all that information was useless because I do something. You see, this all makes sense when I put it all together. It's like a jigsaw piece. Anyway, thank you for joining the chat. Anyway, guys, let's talk about some... For. This is useless because I have a good PC. Wrong. That is so wrong. You are wronger than you've ever been in your entire life. So late game Hoi 4, your game will still slow down, even if you have a godlike PC. But well, let's ask the question first. Why does Hard Survive 4 particularly slow down? Why is it a problem late, 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 late game? So people always say at the start of the game, it's pretty okay. And it progresses more and more into late game. It becomes more and more of a more of a problem. Well, the, the simple explanation is let's go into observe mode. So we press the TO key and type in observe. So now we're basically basically watching the AI do its thing. We'll go five speed and let the AI do its thing. If you just don't know it's there, the AI just did like 50 actions within a millisecond. Front lines assigned to a bunch of generals. Don't forget, every country in the game is doing this. Every country is reassigning and moving their generals around and then you can see there's like a flicker happening as well because it's like it checks the front lines every now and then. Is there enough divisions on that front line? Will that be sufficient based on the amount of divisions that I've got? And it'll constantly keep checking that over and over and over and over and over again. This creates lag. The more divisions that exist in the world, the more AI has to do these checks on each division and each army to make sure that they're in the right place and that the right amount of divisions are assigned there. This is a decision a player never has to make. A player makes a decision and sticks with it. The AI constantly has to keep checking and updating to make sure the player is not trying to do shenanigans and therefore trying to invade a front line that has no divisions on it. And you know, sometimes AI gets confused. Like for instance, you have multiple front lines and the AI will put too few divisions on one front line, like two divisions and you can just run forward. It happens sometimes because the AI has to prioritize what it thinks, what it thinks is the best front line. You're probably saying, oh, well, the problem is the AI. I mean, that's partially true. The problem is the AI and the AI has to make so many little decisions. But once again, the AI needs to constantly adapt to the player and update to make the best possible decisions. And that is the reason why the AI divisions shuffle around so much. So one of the things you can do, once again, this is just seems so stupid, but we'll go we'll do it anyway, is you can turn off the AI. Please know, in a multiplayer game, you cannot do this because you cannot open the console in a multiplayer game. At the end of the day, that's when the AI makes a check to see if the divisions are on the front lines and they're in the right positions, of course, there's an algorithm to it. There's a lot of information in the back end it has to check. But as you can see now, at the end of the day, there's no stutter as each day ends. So if I turn the AI, you can notice a little one. Oh, it's very small. It's very small. But regardless, that's one way of speeding the game up. Of course, not usable. It's stupid. I get it. You can't play the game without AI. It's just stupid. And you can't even do it in multiplayer, so it's pointless anywho. Other thing we can do, just to prove my point, is you can do the command, delete all units. Once again, crystal clear here. This is not usable in the real world. This will delete all divisions and all navy. But if I do this and press space, look how fast this is. I can't even see the time ticking up because it's so unbelievably fast. So as you can see, the number one reason the game's last late game guys is the number of divisions and the AI has to make lots of checks on front lines with divisions and armies to make sure they follow all their set requirements not a coder not an AI developer so understand everything I'm saying is kind of layman's terms okay let's just say you're playing a game of Hoi 4 and you're not fighting against a nation let's say Brazil so you delete all units space BRA and that's Brazil and that's deleted all of Brazil's divisions for instance if it's someone who's not in the war you can feel like you can cheat and get away with it and potentially speed the game up a little bit but that's just an option for instance if you want to specifically delete a nation that is not actually a part of the war so therefore isn't potentially a problem so we figured out it's divisions that cause the problem and it's usually the ai that's causing the bottleneck in the back end let's just get rid of a misconception this is a popular thing that gets repeated over and over again in the hoi 4 community so i'm gonna be the bad guy and correct you guys okay hearts of iron 4 does not use one core have I upset you? Have I pissed you guys off? Are you angry? It is optimized for multi-core support and it does take advantage of multi-core support. And you can even do that yourself by opening Task Manager, checking the CPU when you're in game and playing the game, okay? And you can see the CPU spikes when you've unpaused the game on all of your cores, but the AI is only on one core. So you'll notice the AI is the most intensive. That's one. And two, it's only on one specific core. Now, once again, I, I don't want to go too much depth of why that is, but the layman's explanation 
is that when the AI is divided up into multiple cores, there's more desync issues. And because we all have different CPUs with different levels of cores, some people have two, some people have four, eight, 12, 16, 32 cores, it causes more and more issues of trying to synchronize everyone's PCs with the same AI, creating many, many desync problems. So unfortunately, as far as I'm aware, Hoi4 will never correct that problem with the base code and having the AI on one core. I'll say it again, Hearts of Iron 4 does not use one core. It is optimized for multi-core support. All right, so now we've got all the, the homework done. You've expanded your brain on how CPUs and how divisions cause the most lag. What can we do about it? What can we do about it? Let's hop out the game and let's load up the game with one of my mods that I frequently use. So there's a mod out there called the Tool Pack mod. The toolpack mod is like a Swiss army knife of console commands made easy into like one universal tool that builds into the Hoi4 UI. And with this tool, you're allowed to do lots of shenanigans. Once again, it is a mod and also understand that you can't do achievements with this mod. My presumption would be is the amount of time the devs have put into the overall code of the game, there's probably the most time invested into the AI. AI is horrendously difficult to code. It's really, really hard. And try and understand when you're laughing going, ha, 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 ha. AI made a, made a bad mistake. Ha, 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 ha. I am big brain monkey. Ha, ha, ha. Try and understand that's thousands upon thousands of hours of code that went into that uh, AI. And just the fact that you managed to outsmart that just one time, you're not smarter than that coder, bitch. All right, so this is the toolpack mod. It's this little icon here. With this, you get to make your own little role play scenario, which is kind of fun. So you can move states around if you want to and, and transfer them to other countries. That's not the reason we're here today. We're here because we want to annex countries that are useless. So what you basically do is you find a country like, let's say, Uruguay, which I love Uruguayans, okay? Any Uruguayans in the chat right now? So you basically, what you do is select the countries in question, all the countries in South America. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this will make an impact on the game because resources are distributed a bit strange and also if this nation ever does declare war in a country which is a possibility it will cause some really funky things so i've selected all the south american and latin american countries here and then you annex them with that button and then you have got the girthiest uruguay you have ever seen uruguay me uruguay me now <laughs> and i guess at the same time what you could do is reduce the population of uruguay so what i'm trying to do right now is remove the population of their core territory because i don't want the problem just to be moved on to another country because think about it uruguay has annexed the entirety of south america and then and middle america uh, so that potentially means that this nation could create lots of divisions and i don't want that to happen because that's going to just create more divisions anyway but this is a way of basically curtailing the overall amount of divisions late game so you're probably thinking right now dave none of this is going to work you can't use achievement this isn't multiplayer what's the even point of doing this what's the point so what you can do now is basically save this this is a save game and then when you want to play a multiplayer game you basically load that save game so now you have a basically a uruguay that's incredibly weaker and and therefore you don't have to worry about as many divisions spot in late game this will sort late game lag out by at least 20 30 percent because there will be less divisions in the world overall and you could do the same for iran iraq yemen Omen, Liberia, Nepal, Tibet, Bhutan. They're all the nations that don't necessarily play a big role in the war. So therefore, if they're missing, it won't derail the game to a certain degree. Also be aware, if you do release all of Africa, if anyone's experienced that through the rule options, that does slow the game down too. Once again, an extra nation potentially means more AI commands, potentially means more divisions, potentially means more shuffling of those divisions on the front line. I want to be crystal clear here. I want to tell you guys that I think the AI is code very very well it might not look that way when you hop into a nation that has 2,000 divisions but the truth is there's so many calculations that happening in the back end to decide where these divisions have got to go that's the reason why the AI sometimes feels a little bit overwhelming and that to a player it looks stupid but to understand that the AI is doing a lot of calculations so there's a lot going on in the back end 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 why I disable South America with their mods dedicated to it ah! Ah, good lad that moves on to the next point so instead of tool packing it and making your own little wacky version instead of making your own wacky version why not find a mod that does that for you so a good example of a mod remove south america here you go here's a good one here no south america basically removes them completely this will not make a proxy state and annex them all in one go this basically means they are not on the map anymore they have been completely removed so the chance of they creating divisions is now 
zero. All of South America is no man's land. Uh, there are also expert AI mod 4.0. There's an option in this one as well that basically means all of the minor powers have like one research slot. So there's less things for them to do. And they also don't make any divisions as well. Also, you can tell the AI in this mod to make 40 wits meaning they're less likely to spam small divisions. So there's less divisions on screen. Less divisions means less CPU usage, meaning more speed late game. Are you understanding now? Is it all making sense? An expert AI mod is actually a really good mod, by the way. It doesn't make the AI any better. All it does is it makes the AI work towards like meta combat wits, big, big combat wits, which is really fun, by the way. If you ever played against an AI with meta combat wits, it's so fun because you get to, when you get encirclements, they feel more fulfilling because you've actually encircled lots of really hardcore equipment. And two, breaking those divisions is so difficult. It is really fun. You should really check it out. There are some multiplayer mods as well, like the spot mod. I don't know what the big meta guys use anymore. But this mod removes most of South America too. It also removes a lot of the other minor powers in Asia as well. So once again, it is a multiplayer optimized mod. Be aware of that. It might not be useful for single player. Are we ready for the final thing? So I was going to end this on a big note, okay? And it's time to show you guys the ultimate meta trick in the community to speed the game up. Oh, you're going to hate me for this. It doesn't work in multiplayer. And unfortunately, you can't use it in Iron Man. I am so sorry, guys. But honestly, from my experience, I don't do neither of those because I don't care about achievements. But here we go, guys. This is the final thing to do to speed the game up. Be aware. If you're running an old CPU, like a budget one or a mid-tier one, this may cause weird things to happen, like your mouse freezing and your keyboard not responding. You have been warned. You have been warned. So the command in console is debug underscore smooth. And once it's turned off, if we go five speed now, we'll go observe as well, why not? You notice the game is blisteringly fast. I have noticed, even with my god tier CPU, my i9-9900K, having de debug smooth turned on increases the game speed up to 20-30%. That is huge. It's massive. It's mega. I personally was blown away. I thought personally with me with a God tier CPU, I won't ever need to worry about this stupid stuff like this. Turns out this is massive. Just to explain what's going on here, Debug Smooth, and this is from Dan Lin told me this. He was the old lead developer of Hearts of Iron 4. It prioritizes your hardware towards the game where your input devices are sidelined, meaning input devices, mice, and keyboards. Hence, what I said to you before, if you are running an older CPU, you might find your mouse and keyboard freezing. If you notice when I scroll, it's a bit juttery. Also, I notice when I press the keyboard buttons, tiny little bit of reaction time delay. And also when you click and whatnot, there's a bit of a reaction delay as well. But for the most part, guys, this runs so fast. I don't think I could play Hearts of Iron 4 without this anymore. Honestly, every game I played Hoi 4, I played it with this. I've not experienced any crashes. I've not experienced any issues. It does slow down a little bit later game because there's more divisions. But for the most part, this runs so silky smooth. And guys, even though I've got a great TPU, I still like to get more speed out of the game. Sometimes when I'm late game, it's, it's getting a bit of a grind. It's going a bit slow. I kind of want it to go a little bit faster. And I love playing a nice, fast, condensed game of Hearts of Iron 4. And this allows me to do it. Honestly, guys, this is the biggest thing I've been told so far. And the fact the community has held on to this for so long, we've not heard about it until recently, has blown my freaking mind. Honestly, though, I'd give this one a go. This is the one that's made the biggest difference to me out of all those changes. I mean, if you combine them all into one perfect storm, that's amazing. You remove the divisions, you turn off the AI, you delete South America, you turn on smoothing. Oh my God, the game's going to be so fast. So we just do it. Let's do it. Boom. AI, delete all divisions. It's basically nothing's happening in the back end. <laughs> What's the point? And the final thing, which is going to upset you the most of all. The final thing to improve Hearts of Iron 4 is to buy a faster CPU. <laughs> oh, no. That's not what I wanted to hear, Dave. Don't do this to me. <laughs> I understand this is not really a fix. There's no fix here. I, I get that. But if you're going to buy a CPU, you'd want one that has very high single tier performance. Because hence, most of the power is going on the CPU. Hence, it's going to be that one AI core that's going to be offloading all the power. So in that case, you tend to find that the higher end Intels tend to be the winners there, where the multi-core winners tend to be the AMDs. Isn't it great we're living in a world where we can pick either Intel or AMD and there's, there's actual reasonable good reason to pick either? That's amazing, don't you think? Guys, 
We've come a long way, haven't we? We've come a long way. I suppose if you're running a four core or a two core, I don't know why you've been on a two core processor right now. If you are running a four core or a two core, if you're going up to eight or 16 or 32, it probably would make a massive improvement. One of the reasons, not necessarily for the CPU optimizations, but also because a lot of the stuff in the windows in the back end that's being running in the background will get offloaded onto the cores. So, so therefore more of the CPU raw power is given to Hoi 4 because that other, that other back end stuff's been dealt with. And the game's already a slideshow of 938. I relate to that, my dude. Mine does too. Mine does too. I notice between 936, 939, you lose about 10, 15% performance. When you get into 41, 42, that's the most intense lag. And then when you reach 944 ish, that's when things start to get a little bit faster. Probably because wars are being ended and divisions are getting destroyed, etc., etc. One thing I forgot to mention this is, oh, actually, this is something else that needs to be mentioned. So the community has a big erection for mods that add more resources to the map. I know that Road 56 does this. I know there's a bunch of other mods that add more resources to the map. I'm going to say it right now. These mods will slow your game down. The reason why in Hearts of Iron 4, there's a limit of how many resources the world has. That's kind of like hardcore into the game. So when you're adding more resources to the map, what you're actually doing is you're extending the production of nations in the game. So remember, what, what do resources do? They basically limit the amount of production you can have based if you're overproducing based on the lack of resources. So the result is you produce less equipment. Less equipment means less divisions. Less divisions means more performance. Remember, it all goes around. So at the end of the day, if you were to remove half of the resources in Hearts of Iron 4, you would have at least a drop of 30, 40, to 50% less divisions in game as well because of the production penalty that you're experiencing having this lack of resources. So when you're playing a mod that adds extra resources like Road to 56, you are slowing the game down. You're making the game run slower. You're in artificially increasing the production of the game of all the countries, therefore creating more divisions. It's very important. You need to understand this. There's a lot of people in the community get really upset when they run out of resources, so they want to play these more resource mods. This is slowing your game down. More countries, more divisions, more resources. All of those things will slow your Hearts of Iron 4 experience down. There isn't a mod out there that I'm aware of that reduces the amount of in-game resources. They all increase it. Guys, I can't be here with you guys at the same time saying, I'm playing Road to 56 and four other mods that increase resources and the game runs to a crawl in 1943. Please, Paradox, fix, fix Paradox. Dude, you did this to yourself. You slapped yourself in the face and now you're crying because you slapped yourself too hard. Stop it. Stop it. Anyway, guys, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Gotta go fast.